2,292 students successful in their studies from the various law schools across Nigeria have been called to the Nigerian bar. New Whigs have been urged to play by the rules and act within the ethics of the legal profession. It's a day these 2,292 lawyers will never forget. The 26th of November, the day they were called to the Nigerian bar. As the senior members of a legal profession arrive, the successful candidates were certified feet and proper persons for the legal profession, and they were allowed to wear their wigs and gowns as lawyers. The new wigs must stay clear of any act capable of bringing disrepute to the legal profession and strictly adhere to the rules of the profession, the warning from the chairman of the body benches. As members of the only legal profession, there are ground rules to be observed by members of the profession. These are the rules of professional ethics, which regulate the conduct of lawyers and the conduct of law business by members of the profession. New weeks must make the rule they are working on panel. On his part, the Director General of the Nigeria Law School says the mass failure of candidates has prompted the board of the school to make sweeping reforms that will prevent a reoccurrence. This was a disappointing performance. We will prompted the Board of Studies of the Council of Legal Education to recommend compulsory admission classes for all of the candidates in the future. Some of the new Whigs had to say something about the joy they feel. I feel really happy. I feel elated. I'm so grateful to God for making me part of those being called to bat today. Former Nigerian Vice President Alhaji Atiku Abubakar and a judge of the Federal High Court are some of the proud parents of the new Whigs. My expectation is that I don't need a lawyer to hire a lawyer to serve. We have been able to produce another lawyer in our profession. I mean our family rather. That is the Ademola family. This is about the fifth generation of all of us. Right from the first Nigerian Chief Justice, Sadi Tokumba Ademola. Out of over 7,000 candidates that sat for the bar final exams, these lucky ones have been called to the bar. It is expected that they will contribute their quarter to the growth of the legal profession in Nigeria. Convicted MEND leader Henry Orca might have to wait a while longer pending the amendment of his argument put before the court as the South African Supreme Court of Appeal postponed indefinitely his appeal. Henry Oka had, through his defense lawyer, challenged the jurisdiction of the court to hear and determine the charges brought against him, as well as the conviction on the counts that relates to engaging in terrorism activities. Channel's television correspondent in South Africa, Betty Dibia, sent in this report on the proceedings in the courtroom. She reports that the panel of judges pointed out that there was no proper constitutional challenge of the relevant acts which covers the protection of a constitutional democracy against terrorism and other related activities. Henry Oka wasn't in court, but his legal team was. So was his wife, Azuka Oka, as well as some Nigerian officials. The arguments never got underway as the judges of appeal led by Justice Mohammed Nafsa made an observation on the presentation of the matter by the appellant's team. He noted that from court records of Mr. Orca's previous lawyer, Lokiman Natlala, a great deal of detail was provided regarding the difference between just wars or armed struggle and terrorism, as well as arguments over extraterritorial jurisdiction, but no constitutional challenge was properly presented regarding the statute being dealt with. We've got a statute that's in place that Justice Class and Porto was bound by. And what I'm putting to you is, is it your intention to continue to argue in the face of what I put to you, constitutional points that weren't raised in the manner in which they were to be raised? Or would you want an opportunity to make such a challenge and have this appeal pending? But well, it's quite clear that those requirements uh, wasn't met. If one accepts that in respect of the first 12 counts, all, all that one is dealing with on appeal is the question of the jurisdiction of the court. 
Now, doesn't that raise all kinds of difficulties for the appellant, absent a proper constitutional challenge? We can't adopt a position in respect to it because it's not before us. Well, I, I agree with you, Lord, that the, the, the constitutional point, even if it's a good point, Yes. It's not being properly In less than 15 minutes, the judges laid two options before the appellant's legal team. Go ahead as is and face a mound of legal hurdles or request a postponement in order to properly present a constitutional challenge. You have one of two options. The one is to abandon the constitutional point because you've conceded it hasn't been properly raised. And the other is to ask for an adjournment in order to raise it properly. Just putting that to you as, as, as the two options that I see open to you in the light of your concession. The wise decision was obviously to ask for a postponement senator. We will supplement our arguments and we will include the Minister of Justice because it is quite apparent at this point that there is a constitutional issue that must be addressed. The matter has been postponed sine a deal or indefinitely pending the time the legal team of the appellant will file supplementary heads of argument on the matter. And before we go, some happenings in the court. It's been 90 days since Amino Oguche had been arrested by the Department of State Service and yet no charges have been brought against him in court. He was arrested in Sudan and was accused of masterminding the Yaya bomb blast. The DSS says it is still drafting the charges against the suspect and will arraign him at the appropriate time. This, according to the defense, is not acceptable and a violation of the suspect's fundamental human rights. In the meantime, the court struck out the case filed by the Nigeria police for want of diligence prosecution. The Federal High Court, Abuja, has reserved judgment in a suit filed by an aspirant to the House of Representatives from Adamawa State, Aliu Abuba Gori, seeking to unseat the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Adamu Mwazu, and also counsel the planned delegates convention of the party. At the resumed hearing of the suit, counsel to the plaintiff, Rotimi Ogunosho, argues that the resignation of the immediate past chairman of the party, Abhaji Bamanga Tuka, did not comply with the provision of section 47 of the constitution of the party, which stipulates that a 30-day notice be given to the National Executive Committee before the resignation of the national chairman of the party. He further argues that the appointment of Moazo as the new chairman did not follow the laid down provisions of the party constitution. As such, the court should set aside his appointment. The second plaintiff in the matter, Bamanga Tuka, who filed a counterclaim, argued that he was forced to resign his post as the national chairman of the party in order for the seven defected governors to come back to the party. Tuka further stated that the neck of the party has no power to appoint the national chairman, adding that the votes and proceedings of neck held at Wadata House on January the 15th and 20th, we deliberated on his resignation as national chairman and appointment of Moazo as chairman and nullity. Opposing the application, counsel to PDP and Moazo, Mr. Solomon Umar, asked the court to dismiss the suit on ground that the plaintiff lacks the right to institute such suit and that the counterclaim filed by the manga Tucker is strained in law and cannot be accepted by court. The issue is whether a party has a right to conduct its affairs in contravention of the Electoral Act and the Constitution. Every party is a product of the Nigerian Constitution. And that's our own contention. And that insofar as you comply with the provisions or you conduct your affairs, you must comply with the provisions of the law which gave birth to you. Everything was done in compliance with the party constitution. When Bamanga Tuku resigned from the party, the deputy national chairman took over the reins of affairs of the party in line with the party constitution. And under his uh, leadership and uh, headship of the party, in line with section 47 of the party, of the party constitution, 
uh, uh, Moazu was appointed, appointed under the leadership of the Deputy National Chairman. So having been appointed in line with the Constitution, that only complements the 1999 Constitution and uh, the Electoral Act. So there is no breach anywhere. Everything has been done in line with the party constitution. There's nothing as good and fulfilling as living a successful life, which I think we should all strive to achieve. And that will do it for us on this week's edition of Law Weekly. My name is Victoria Ido, and remember, I'm willing to hear from you via the addresses on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again.